Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of the Sigma 15 millimeter F 1.4 DG DN art lens that is a fisheye. That's right, this is a 15 millimeter 1.4 fisheye for the Sony E mount as well as the Air Mount Alliance. Alliance. Alliance, which still no one is ever gonna use. But this is an interesting lens, and we're gonna get to who it's for, sample images, where I shot it, but before we get into all of that, there are no other fisheye lenses on Nikon, Canon, or Sony when it comes to mirrorless that aren't the Lawas or the cheap $299 manual ones. Nikon doesn't have a fisheye, Canon doesn't have a fisheye, and Sony doesn't have a native fisheye. So this is basically the first of its kind, and it's a 1.4. Just for size comparisons, I want to break out my very own 16 millimeter 2.8 fisheye for the F mount from Nikon that I used for years. Look at the size difference. That's a 2.8, this is a 1.4, this is a 15, this is a 16. Just keep this in mind as we go through this video to determine if this might be the right lens for you or if it might not be the right lens for you. Now Sigma says this is the world's first 15 millimeter 1.4 fisheye uh, full frame that's diagonal. Now for those of you who don't follow what fisheyes are, you have your regular fisheye, which is what this is, and you also have a circular fisheye. Circular means it's literally a circle. Nikon and Canon both have an eight to 15 millimeter lens. I used to have that. I did go ahead and sell that when I dumped all of the Nikon gear, but this is a first of its kind. The biggest questions I'm gonna try and answer in this video is, do you need a fisheye or should you stick with something that's a rectilinear? What is rectilinear? Well, this is a fisheye. You can see the bowing and rectilinear has the lines go the other way, straight and extends them out so it is not bowing. But Sigma has a 14 1.4, which we reviewed, the link is down below. Sony has a 14 1.8 that we also reviewed, which is down below as well. And then there's a 14 to 24 2.8 for those people that don't have the ability or the need to have a specialty lens yet and might be looking for something wide, this might be the option for you. So where did I shoot the fisheye? Well, of course I went to the art museum. Why? Because the stairs where Rocky ran up are perfect for testing out wide angle lenses. Yeah, with a lens like this at 15 millimeters, you're getting 180 degree field of view because it's a fisheye. You are literally seeing from all the way to the left, all the way to the right and capturing that. Whereas a 14 1.4 that Sigma also makes is only giving you a 114 degree field of view. So if you need more field of view, maybe you're an astrophotographer and you want to cover the entire sky, this might be an option for you to consider. I then went inside, shot some of the art, shot my dad, as well as took it to a skate park because fisheye lenses are known for shooting a lot of skateboarders or BMX bike riders and everything along those lines. So we'll get through those sample images, but now let's talk about the size and weight of this lens. This is a chonky lens. This weighs in at three pounds or 1360 grams, whereas the 14 millimeter 1.4, which is very similar in design to this lens, comes in at 2.5 pounds or 1160 grams. But let's take a look at the outside of the lens. The first thing you notice, of course, is the bulbous front element. That's right, that is your fish eye element there. You don't wanna touch that. You never wanna touch it. You can't touch this. So you may be too legit to quit or something along those lines. On the side of the lens, you've got a autofocus to manual focus switch. You have your AFL button. So that's one of those custom buttons you can set. You also have a focus lock. So if you wanna override your focus, you could set it to manual focus and set it to infinity, and then you can just just lock it in and it's not gonna shift. That's always great on a lens like this. And you also have an on and off for clicking or de-clicking because you have an aperture ring, which I think is still a big waste on lenses 
like this. But this is a pretty nice feeling lens. I mean, it's heavy compared to my old school 16 millimeter 2.8. This doesn't weigh anything at all, and it's super tiny and dainty and fits in the bag much nicer. Now this also has a lens collar. You have your Arca Swiss plate, so you can put this right on a tripod that is Arca Swiss compatible, and you can start shooting without any problems there. Now I personally like to take it off and Sigma goes ahead and gives you the option. You just have to line it up and you can take it off and pop it back on. So it's nice that you have that ability to take it on and take it off. If you're never gonna use a tripod, you don't need something like this. Now, with the lens cap, it's interesting to show you, they did this also with the 14 millimeter, is you have two places to store some filters. Now these are gel filters that go in the back of the lenses. You can store them inside of the lens cap, which is smart. When you're done, you just lock it right back up and you're good to go and you can cover up your lens once again. The lens also comes with a lens heater retainer. It's kind of like a rubber ring that you would put on the outside. I've actually never used one of those heaters out in the wilderness, but it does come with that retainer. Not like one of those girls in fourth grade who's like, I got a retainer. This is my retainer. How's your sound? You like my retainer, Johnny? No, I don't like your retainer, Jennifer. Let's jump into some of the images first outside of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Now it's very difficult to get your lines straight when you're looking through the camera with the fisheye because every line is bowed. This one was shot at 1.4 in front of the Museum of Art. I love that you can see everything from the left all the way to the right. I tried to get the lines as best as possible. Now, Sigma says that you have edge to edge sharpness with a lens like this. Now, I shot this one at 1.4 at 1 10,000th of a second with the Sony A1. The A1 allows you to go up to super high shutter speeds because normally at 1.4, you couldn't do that. Now, with uh, astrophotography, you don't have to worry about those super fast shutter speeds because it's gonna be really dark out and you're gonna go the other direction. But is it sharp edge to edge at 1.4? Well, here I'm focused on the art museum stairs, but if we look in the bottom corners, well, no, it, it's not sharp. Now that's because we're shooting at 1.4 and we're focused somewhere in a distance and it's not always going to be perfectly sharp. Now, if you're going to be doing astrophotography and you're focused in on the infinite stars and infinity and beyond, it it might act a little sharper edge to edge because you're at infinite focus. That might be a little bit better. But I did take it to F8 for the next image. And when you go into the corners at F8, you can see they really got it nice and sharp across the frame. So that is really nice inside of this lens. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the 1514 fish I and edited with Fropac 4. Check this out. We've got Blue's Clues followed by Brooklyn. C41, Copper Tone, DeLorean, High C, Kaleidoscope, Mel Brooks, Saltwater Taffy, Thick, Tin Type, and Wet Hot American Summer. But my all time favorite from Fro Pack One, you know what it is it's Skittles. Look at this Skittles, one click, boom. So look, if you want to speed up your raw workflow, give yourself a great starting point, or you want to edit in mobile, we created 14 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack4. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get the Grand Slam bundle that is fropack one, two, three, and four, and of course includes Skittles, you can save even more. Now let's get back to the review. Now, if you're deciding between a 15 1.4 fisheye or a 14 to 24 28 or the 1418 or the 1414, let me show you what 14 millimeters looks like in comparison. This is what 14 millimeters looks like in a rectilinear lens. It's straighter across. Look at the lines on the ground. They're not bowed like they are with the fisheye. But I also went ahead and zoomed the 14 to 24 to 15. Actually, it was 15.1 millimeters just to show you the difference between 15 millimeters on a rectilinear lens or 15 millimeters on a fisheye. You could see you get so much more of the image with that fisheye on. If I had the 14 1.4, I would have put it side by side, but we don't get to keep all the lenses that are sent to us. We test them and we send them back to the manufacturers after we're done using them. After photographing the front of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, I like to go to the back door. I'm a big fan of the back door, so I parked out back and I walked up the back stairs so I could get this photo right here. It's nice, perfectly centered, and look, if this is the effect that you're going for, 
it's going to work out. But just understand this, a fisheye lens, if you're taking like a thousand photos in a day and you have a fisheye, maybe 1% of the photos should be done with a fisheye. You get those perfectly centered, symmetrical images with the fisheye, then you put that fisheye lens away especially if you're gonna use it in a photojournalistic situation. You don't wanna overdo it. And people tend to overdo fisheye lenses. That's why it becomes overkill. It's like shooting fish in a barrel, it's so easy. So just keep in mind, you wanna do it sparingly and then you put it away and you don't bring it out again until the next time you do a photo shoot. So keep that in mind if you do decide to get a fisheye. But I show you this image, these two. I show you this first one and the second one. Put them side by side and you can see how the bowing of the building is different just by me changing my angle. So fisheyes you can play around with all day long, just for 1% of your shots. Uh, you, you, you gotta use it sparingly, but you can see just by changing your angle and changing your level, the difference of the Boeing is prevalent. Now let's take you inside the Philadelphia Museum of Art. You have this beautiful grand stairway. This was perfect for shooting at 1.4 or perfect to shoot it with, with the fisheye. I did shoot it at 1.4. That allows me to gather more light. And that's where those astrophotographers are gonna love something like this. But continuing on into the main portion of the gallery, I wanted to throw my dad in here because he likes going to the art museum. So I met him there. Here's my dad standing in the middle of a doorway. Let's look at that for a second. Look at those kicks. Look how blue they are. Usually he wears some kind of track suit, jumpsuit. He was big into those in the 80s. Blue shoes, blue jeans, blue jacket with blue highlights and a blue baseball hat. That equals my dad being all fly for a white guy at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Now, you're not gonna use a fisheye lens to do what I just did here to photograph one of my favorite paintings, or one of my favorite painters is Claude Monet. This is, I just wanted to show it because I actually put Skittles on this. Claude Monet needed more contrast, so I banged it out with some Skittles for him there. Now, yes, this is a 15 millimeter fisheye, but what about lens correction? Can you correct it and have it be a usable rectilinear style image? And the answer to that is, yeah, you do have the ability to do that. The first image of my dad looking at the lilies uh, at the art museum here, this is no correction. This is what fisheye looks like when you shoot it at 15 millimeters, because you can only shoot it at 15 millimeters. The next image is where you do lens correction inside of Lightroom. It's correcting and taking away all of that bowing, but you lose so much of your field of view. And look how wide those door frames are. They get stretched out. Now you do have the ability to use this lens for multiple things. You could take the fisheye and you can do the lens correction and that could work. Or are you better off with the 14 millimeter style lens and never having the option for the fisheye? Now, one word of advice or a word of warning, if you pick up this fisheye lens and you're shooting with the Sony and you have lens correction on in the camera, when you bring it into Adobe Lightroom, lens correction, the checkbox is going to be checked, which means it's taking away the fisheye effect and giving you the rectilinear effect because it's correcting for the Boeing. You just have to click that off and that is where the fisheye effect will come out. So keep that in mind if you pick up this lens and have lens correction on in the camera, that's what you need to be aware of. Now the interesting thing about that is what I was just talking about. You would get the best of both worlds. I personally rather have a fisheye and a separate lens because I can do that. But if you're someone who wants the fisheye and wants to correct for it, I, and I don't know that I would personally do that. I'm gonna talk more about that at the end of this video, but you could have the best of both worlds if you wanted to do that. So back out the back door at the Philadelphia Museum of Art because I wanted to get a picture with the sun in the corner. So the sun is in the corner and you can see that there's not a lot of issues where the sun is. You're not seeing a ton of flare. You are seeing a little bit here across the front of the image, but the second image outside is where you really don't see it. I put the sun square dab in the corner of the shot so that we are shooting right into the sun and it renders really well. But over here on the left-hand side, you have a little bit of green ghosting that's not the green goblin or anything. It's just green ghosting. It could be Slimer, though. Maybe it's Slimer. Eh, who's afraid of ghosts? Not me. I actually think it handled it really well. So far, the quality of the glass, fantastic. I love the sharpness. I love the contrast and colors that I'm able to get out of it. And at 1.4, super duper tack sharp. I also need to mention, for those who care how many aperture blades it has, it has 11 
aperture blades. Now when it comes to close focusing, sometimes you want to get close to your subjects with the fisheye to make them look more extreme. You get to 15.2 inches or 38.5 centimeters is where you need to be for your close focusing. Anything closer than that, it will not be in focus. Now this is a fisheye lens. What's a fisheye lens without taking it out to a skate park? No, I didn't have Atiba Jefferson by my side this time to help me take some photos outside, but I called some friends, they broke out their BMX bikes, and they went out to FDR Park, which is underneath, it's a real famous uh, skate park that a lot of music videos have been shot at, and a ton of famous photos have come out of because a lot of famous skaters do go there to skate. First things first, let's zoom in. Nice and focused. You have the HLA motors. Those are those higher li high linear actuator motors. So you can get fast autofocus. Now with a fisheye, it's very hard to see whether it's focusing or not uh, because you're not moving very far with that autofocus. Now, if you do have a Sony A1 or an A93 right now, you are gonna be limited to 15 frames per second at max because that is the limitation that Sony puts on these third party lenses. So keep that in mind. Now, that there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're going to be shooting at more than 15 frames per second, but that is what you have. The autofocus worked really well. It was super fast for getting the shots. Again, colors, tones, clarity, as we shifted away from the BMX rider riding underneath the i95 to going outside a little bit to use some of the natural light, it just looks really nice. But fish eyes are really easy to use. It's just a matter of get your angles right, find your subject, take the picture, and everything's gonna be in it for 180 degrees. Now, one more time, I wanna show you what it looks like uncorrected. This is the full 180 degrees of a, they're actually shooting a music video out there at the time that we showed up, actually they showed up after us, and this is what it looks like corrected. So this stretches things out like the people on the right side of the frame, they're stretched out more than if you looked at them with the fisheye. So you can have the best of both worlds. It is a good option if you wanna shoot fisheye and then correct it later, you have the ability to go ahead and do that. Just keep in mind, that's cropping a ton of the image out there. You're just gonna be using pretty much the center portion, it's straightening things out and then chopping off everything else that it doesn't think you need or that you can't use for a rectilinear shot. Last frame, we got a skateboarder, just popped out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna take pictures of a skateboarder and there it is, skateboarder, nice and sharp, but the rest of the background looks really boring. I mean, I did shoot him at 1.4 and he is super sharp right there. He is contrasty, the tones look great. And of course, I added some thick and kaleidoscope, different presets from Fropack 4 to make this look fantastic. Let me jump in here and say that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I've been using for my personal website for more than 10 years at this point because it's simple, easy, affordable, and I don't need to know any coding. To get your 14 day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. So how much is this lens? Is it cheap, Steven? No. No, it's not, it's $1,999. It's an expensive lens. I bring that up because the 14 1.4 from Sigma comes in at a couple hundred bucks less at $1,600. And by a couple hundred, I mean $400 less. Sony's 14 1.8 is also $1,600. And Sigma's 14 to 24 2.8 art lens is $1,400 just for comparison. So who's it for? I will tell you after I sniff it and then blow it with the wind tunnel test. You know, it smells like Gordon Fisherman. You know that guy, Gordon Fisherman? You know, he's got on that, it smells like his beard. Wind tunnel test. <laughs> Failure. Failure. Failed the wind tunnel test. So if you were thinking about buying this lens and you cared about the wind tunnel test, can't buy it because it failed the wind tunnel test because it's so bulbous and massive. Who's it for? A select few people who need a fisheye lens that is native to the E-mount or the L-mount alliance. You need something that is autofocus, wide open. Are you shooting astro images? I mean, I guess it's gonna get boring after a while shooting astro images like this because you're literally getting the entire sky in. 180 degrees up there. But if this is what you're looking for, it's gonna give you great results. It's just something that you're gonna have to pay for because it's $2,000. If you're a skateboard shooter, BMX shooter, 
This could be the lens that you've been waiting for. Just understand, it's a three pound lens and it's a lot to move around. This is not the lens that you buy as your first lens. If you're just starting out and you need a 14-ish millimeter lens or a 15 millimeter lens and you're on the Sony, you're probably looking at a 14 to 24 2.8. Other than that, I'd probably choose the 1414 from Sigma or the Sony 141.8. Both of those are fantastic lenses, and I really love that Sigma lens. I was shockingly surprised how amazing that one was. Who do you think the lens is for? Is this something that you would pick up? Let me know down below. I thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.